Guernica is arguably Juan Picasso's greatest works, even above much of his cubist work, because it's getting at some very deep ideas, and ideas that we can all identify with. The piece is done in reaction to the bombing of a small Basque village by the name of Guernica in April of 1937. It had been chosen for bombing practice by Hitler's burgeoning war machine, and they're using the Spanish Civil War as a testing ground to see, for example, what happens if we bomb civilians? Do they all give up? Can we wipe out an entire city in an afternoon? And they choose Guernica to do that. This will create a reaction in Picasso, who is in France at the time, but of course is from Spain. So appalled and outraged, Picasso rushes through the crowded streets to his studio, where he quickly sketches the first images for the mural that would be Guernica. His search for inspiration, of course, is over. And let me give you a sense of what it would have been like on the ground. The townspeople are being cut down as they run from the crumbling buildings. The city of Guernica burns for three days. We see 1,600 civilian deaths. It is a brutal campaign. This is Hitler using his new HE-111s and other aircraft to bomb this town. And imagine going through a bombing like this. These are frequently 500 pound bombs, but they're incendiaries and others used on Guernica. And at first the townspeople are saying, they're going, hey, look, a bunch of aircraft. I wonder what they're going off to bomb. And being the first ones, they wouldn't realize it's them. And then you run into your house to get away from it. But of course your house might collapse on you in the event that a bomb hits it. That's going to be a bit of an issue. And if you go out on the street, then you have the problem of debris flying everywhere, possibly being hit by an aircraft that is strafing. There's really no place to go. And this horrifies the world. Uh, it hits the French papers by May 1st, a mere three or four days later, and Picasso wants the world to know what happened. So he creates Guernica. And in it, we see a series of key figures. And they're represented not in a realistic or romantic term, but rather he's using abstraction because he feels it gets across the emotion. He's trying to illuminate what happened at Guernica, how horrifying it is, and trying to let the entire world know. And so he keys in on certain forms. We see a woman with outstretched arms, a bull, an agonized horse. They're all refined in sketch after sketch and then transferred to this massive canvas, which he also reworks several times. Picasso will state that a painting is not thought out and settled in advance. He's working on it and altering it throughout. While being done, while it is being done, it changes as one's thoughts change. And when it's finished, it goes on changing according to the state of mind or whoever's looking at it, according to Picasso. And he'll finish it within three months. So let's look at the piece and kind of tear it apart for a minute and see what we're dealing with. First, we have the obvious forms, the bull and horse. These are the two dominant elements that we see in the mural. We have art historians that state that the bull and horse are important characters in Spanish culture. Of course, Picasso himself certainly used these characters to play many different roles over time. However, in this instance, the bull probably represents the onslaught of fascism, not just in Spain during the Spanish Civil War, but also the attack by Germany on Guernica itself. Picasso said, it meant brutality and darkness, presumably reminiscent of his almost prophetic form that we see here. He also stated that the horse represents the people at Guernica. Now, by the way, how is this prophetic? Because aerial bombardment and the horrors of aerial bombardment will be used by both sides in World War II and kill millions. So we are looking at Picasso almost being prophetic, saying this is a horrific thing that has happened. We need to stop it now. But of course, people don't listen because it's Spain. Who cares? It's not us. It's not London or Berlin or Washington, D.C. So what do we care? 
Then we have the light. Now, the light has a couple of obvious ideas. First of all, he is trying to illuminate what happened at Guarnica. He's trying to draw the world's attention to this horrific thing. And so we see the motif, the light that is used throughout, trying to draw us into that. We also see the use of hair and newsprint. Uh, the newsprint, like, now you can obviously tell this isn't actually newsprint, but these small dashes come across as newsprint when viewed from a fairly common viewing distance, say six to eight feet or more away. And he's trying to, again, get the world's attention to Guarnica. One of the ways, of course, we do that in the 20th century is going to be through newspapers, and he's going to use that motif. We also see the hair, the hair that's always standing, never settled, getting across the chaos of what's going on. We also see that in the general form of the horse, where we can't really tell which direction it's going or what's going on. But you could imagine running around the streets of Guarnica with exactly those ideas in mind, because everything's blowing up around you. Where do you go? You have no idea. You are literally the first to be attacked in this way at this scale. And then we have the broken sword. The people are defenseless. There's nothing they can do. They could pull out a rifle or something, shoot at the bombers, but they're probably not going to hit them. They're moving very quickly. They're high up. It's a tricky target. They are defenseless. And so we see the broken sword. Because once your sword is broken, it's not a terribly useful weapon, is it? And so the lack of anti-aircraft anti fire, the lack of anything is displayed in this broken sword. The idea that civilians themselves cannot protect themselves in any way. And the military at the time arguably can't either. They're not really prepared for it. We also see the women and children. Now, of course, he's trying to show how horrific this is. You don't want to show the fighting age men being killed. They don't get across an emotional response from the viewer. But by depicting women and children, you will get that idea across. And so here we see a woman uh, and we know she's a mother with the depiction of the breasts. And it also tells us that she's a woman running through the street with a child that is depicted as clearly dead. Why would you do that? Because mothers do strange things when these things happen. There are lots of stories from Dresden and Cologne, places that the Allies firebombed of mothers carrying the bodies of their children in suitcases for weeks afterwards, not knowing what to do, not being willing to give them up, especially when the end comes so quickly with absolutely no warning. Here we see another woman running through the street, and yet her leg seems somehow massive and out of shape, as if uh, it's been injured. Maybe it's barely attached. We see lots of injuries that will amputate or nearly amputate limbs. Imagine just being hit by a brick moving at a couple of hundred miles an hour from an explosion. You can imagine how that's going to mangle a limb. And here we see a woman who's in a house that's on fire, reaching up. She has nowhere to go. She can't get away from the conflagration. And so Picasso is drawing on emotion. It's like any other argument that could be made. If you make a logical argument, people go, huh, that's a good idea. But if you make an emotional argument, they will listen. You can get across a narrative. And people like narratives. We've been raised with them since the Pleistocene, since our ancient, ancient ancestors, to listen to stories that tell us something, that teach us something. And that's exactly what he's tapping into here, trying to teach us something about the horrors of this bombardment, of this war. And here we even see, for example, the bull's tail giving the sense of smoke rising. The whole piece is the horror of the bombing. And by the way, the idea that there are body parts strewn in the street, that is a very real part of aerial bombardment. There are lots of pictures like that that come out of World War II and many of the large bombardments of German, English, and Japanese cities, amongst others. So he's trying to get across the chaos, the horror of what it would be to live through this. People who can't save themselves, people who try to, but you know that they will always be injured. The chaos of the streets, the defenselessness of the people, trying to get word out, 
to the world. And there's a reason that this piece is so powerful. He has captured so much which such, with such a depth of emotion and by presenting it in black, white, gray, basically a grayscale painting. He simplifies it. Any color he could have added could have been misread. Imagine if he added red or yellow. Even a yellow fire could be misread as a little bit of happiness. I know we don't usually see bombardment as happy, but some people might. And so to avoid that, it's black and white because to Picasso, it's a black and white issue. This is horrific. This is something that should not be repeated. And so he depicts it in emotional black and white terms, illuminating it for the public. Today, the piece is widely displayed and the piece and its apocalyptic vision has served as a banner for a nation on its path towards freedom and democracy.